point in time, some manipulation into the aging process using available medications and nutrients. While advancements in biotechnology continue to add healthy years to human lifespan, there are individuals who express concern about this trajectory. Daniel Callahan, co-founder of the Hastings Center, says that there is no known social good coming from the conquest of death, and the worst possible way to resolve this issue is to leave it up to individual choice. The President's Council on Bioethics, headed by Dr. Leon Cass, exemplifies what is sometimes referred to as deathism, a longing for eventual death. In an article entitled, Why Not Immortality?, Dr. Cass writes that victory over mortality is the unstated but implicit goal of modern medical science. However, Dr. Cass continues by writing that immortals cannot be noble and that the finitude of human life is a blessing for every human individual, whether he knows it or not. The argument that Cass makes, or not an argument, one assertion that Cass makes is he says the immortals cannot be noble, which is a hilarious statement to make. Uh, for some reason, he thinks that very short lived beings who are very stupid, don't have time to develop themselves, become mature, learn from experiences before they die, i.e., uh, human beings, they can be noble apparently. But beings who can live indefinitely, acquire wisdom, more experiences, learn from life, some, for some reason they cannot be noble, he says. So I think he has it absolutely backwards. Um, my view is that when we've lived a few hundred years, a few thousand years, however long, we'll look back on who we are today, these very primitive human beings, purely biological, and we'll think, what callow, shallow people those were. My goodness, they tried their best, those poor creatures back there, those very limited brains they had, uh, driven by their genes and their hormones, really quite helpless, poor beings. But my goodness, we can do so much better now. Well, in a sense, Leon Cass is an advocate of euthanasia, you know, encouraging people to believe that death is somehow good for them. And, uh, you know, the question I would pose is, you know, which is more noble? Um, trying to convince people that death is in somehow, you know, a good thing for you, or somebody that's trying to actually save people's lives? Immortals cannot be noble. Mr. Cass, what do you know about immortals? Right? I couldn't disagree more uh, with this kind of approach. I think that uh, people like Leon Cass um, are missing, missing what it is to be human. They claim that to be human, you have to die, that uh, death is what gives meaning to our lives. Uh, another person quoted here, William Herbert, Carol Burt uh, says that um, that dependency gives us a sense of meaning, meaningful connection within the journey of our lives. I really, really don't agree. And it's as simple as that. It's a gut disagreement. Uh, and I don't think I need to provide any special arguments. Uh, any person who looks into his heart and sees appreciation of death um, I think is missing the point. I think life is about uh, being alive, uh, about uh, learning more about the world, about uh, cooperating with other people in being alive and exploring the world and you know maybe even reaching for the stars one day. That is what it, what it is to be human. That's the meaning of life. What if life's meaning really does relate to working out your your salvation with fear and trembling, as it says in the Bible? What if, what if it does relate to something beyond physical existence? And many, many people who've lived very rich physical lives are joyful at the face of their death because they feel like those lives are about something even more full and rich. What if it does? What if, what if the very nature of life is such that that an infinite number of recreational trips, an infinite number of books, an infinite number of this or that does not lead to, to any richer happiness, but that in fact being part of a drama of frailty and finitude where we actually give to one another of our very substance and sometimes even die doing it. What if that's what it's about? I mean, to me, the scenario that, that is painted by, by infinite immortality of the physical type, at least in the mode that I know the world, doesn't have nearly the crispness of drama and the power of significance that the story 
of of those who have sacrificed themselves for others does have. Well, they're poets. If you read Cass, he sounds like a poet. But uh, once he's once he's stripped down all the flowery verbiage, it's very simple. Death is good. Disease is good. And as a scientist and as a physician, that's something I simply disagree with. I'd be happy to step aside and let other people have their three scoring. And, and ten, I'd rather they had four score or maybe six score. Although it starts to get edgy at that point. I think over a hundred starts to get edgy. I think that um, individuals such as Dr. Cass and Dr. Fukuyama and Dr. Hobart um, are justified in much of the reasoning. And I think that they seem to care about their lives and the lives of people around them. And I think that they do believe that they are on a correct path. But their correct path is not the path for everyone. Their value system is not the value system for everyone. And it's not saying that their values are wrong or bad, or that those who are advocates of super longevity are wrong or bad. It's not saying that at all. It's saying that the premise by which they base their values, the premise of believing in a shortened lifespan and believing in death as being a sin quo non, are not the wave of the future. They are simply not paying attention to all the advances that are going on. And they're not paying attention to the fact that those of us who are involved in super longevity, life extension, and working on organizations such as the Immortality Institute, Alcor Foundation, Extropy Institute, Transhumanist Arts and Culture, are individuals who are very involved in our work. Uh, most of us have um, a strong career path, uh, are educated, many PhDs, masters, individuals who, whether they're degreed or not, have spent a tremendous amount of time working in their field, um, that we have thought about these things, we have contemplated them, contemplated them uh, to the degree that I think is, is substantial. And certainly we don't know everything, but most of us have a pretty good spin on what's going on when you take Dr. Uh, Michael West and Dr. Max Moore and, and Ray Kurzweil and um, Aubrey de Grey, Dr. de Grey and um, Michael Rose and, and you know just all of the, the, our friends in our community and, and our colleagues in our community and think about the tremendous amount of work that they have put forth, I, there is, it, it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense that, uh, that Dr. Fukuyama, Dr. Cass would um, make such rash and abrupt statements about uh, those of us who are transhumanists.